If you want to understand another example of working of PMOS logic block, here also we can quickly see PMOS, NMOS given by phi and A and B connected in parallel and output is taken between the PMOS logic and the NMOS logic. So when phi is equal to zero, let's say phi bar here. So phi is equal to zero, that means phi bar is equal to one, which means this will be turned on and output will be pre-discharged to zero. So output is zero. Now when phi equal to one means phi bar equal to zero, this PMOS transistor will turn on and let's say A and B both were zeros as well. So all these PMOSes are on, it will pull the output towards VDD. So we have got V out equal to VDD. And we can similarly see for all the different cases of A and B and identify our outputs. So this is the working of the PMOS logic block. What we could achieve here is nothing but we could eliminate our race condition. It's nothing but an aura circuit where you don't need an inverter, external inverter like we need in case of domino circuits. Only thing what we need is an alternating NMOS state and a PMOS state. And when you connect so many NMOS and PMOS alternatively, you can get a pipeline structure. Pipeline structure means at one point of time, one is functioning. Pipeline structure is nothing but stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, where one is functioning with a new input. Other guy is functioning with its previous input. The third guy is functioning with its previous input. The fourth guy is functioning with its previous input. And all of them will work parallelly which will help us to achieve faster operation or which will help us in increasing the throughput. Again, we are not getting into the details of throughput. Rate at which the output is produced will be enhanced. What you need to remember is NORA circuit helps us in a pipeline structure and also helps us to avoid the inverters. Now, NORA circuit also like dynamic circuits has their own problems. They also suffer from charge sharing and charge leakage. Charge leakage is a problem with dynamic circuits. We know that we have studied that also. So avoid Charge leakage is nothing but when my transistor is off, my when my PMOS, let's say this is a dynamic, right? Suppose A was 0, B was 1, V out and phi was also 0. Initially, phi had charged this to VDD. So technically, this has to hold its charge equal to VDD. But because this transistor being off, this is also off due to charge leakage, this output node might tend to lose out on its charge. So there has to be some way in which we can hold this charge when my input is 0 or in some way how I can hold my VDD. There comes the need of zipper circuits, exactly same like NORA. See here, if you can observe, this was your NMOS stage, this was your PMOS stage. I've drawn exactly same NMOS stage, PMOS stage. Only thing I've changed is I have changed all the clocks. So I have called the PMOS clock as 5.1 for the first stage and the NMOS clock as 5.2. And here I have called phi and phi bar. So here I've drawn the waveforms of the clock. So when phi is equal to zero, phi bar is equal to one and vice versa. So let's say phi is equal to one means phi bar equal to zero. My outputs are taken from here and output is taken from here, correct? So when phi is one, this is on. When phi bar is zero, this is on. We know that and vice versa. Now what's going to happen is, pay attention for a minute. When phi is zero, at the same time, my signal psi1 is also zero. So let's understand that case. Phi is zero, psi1 is also zero. Great, we wanted that only correct when we designed it this way. We wanted both of them not to be on at the same time, right? When phi was zero, this was on. That means this was off. Exactly, I've designed it same way. Phi equal to zero, psi1 equal to zero. So this is same, like we have it in dynamic. Same, I can explain it for psi bar, uh, phi bar and psi2 also. The change is here. When phi is equal to one, that means this is on at that point of time in dynamic because this also becomes one input, this turns off. Here what is happening is psi one is given a value VDD minus mod VTP. Let's say VDD is 1.8 and mod VTP is 0.8. Then this value is nothing but one volt. And suppose I have a switching threshold of 0.9 or if I say after 0.9, my transistor PMOS I beg your pardon, after 0.8, which is the threshold voltage, my transistor PMOS will turn on. Then I have made this PMOS transistor slightly on or I have kept this transistor slightly on. And when I keep this slightly on, even if all the NMOS inputs are low, that means my output has to keep itself pre-charged to VDD. But because of the dynamic problem, it can lose its charge. But here what's happening is because phi1 is slightly on, very, very close to cutoff, it's slightly on, it will ensure that it will hold the value of this output towards VDD. The similar explanation can be given here also. I have given my psi2 here not to be equal to zero, but I have given it to be VTN. 
and we know that that threshold voltage this NMOS transistor turns on. So it will be slightly on and that slightly on will ensure that we don't lose out on the charge on this capacitor as well. So in simple words, NORA circuit avoids the race condition in dynamic circuits. However, it has a problem of charge leakage. So we use zipper circuits where the circuit is exactly same like NORA. The only change is the change in the clock and we ensure that when in the evaluation phase, if the evaluation inputs are such that my output needs to stay to its pre-charge value, my transistors of pre-charge or pre-discharge are still kept partially on so that my output value is not lost. Hope you have followed NORA and zipper circuits. Stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much.